This time on Distant Shores, we discuss the feasibility of an electric hybrid drive for the new aluminum 49-foot sailboat we're having built in the Netherlands, and go through a bit of our boat building history. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. We've been documenting the entire build of our new boat, so if you've just discovered our channel or missed previous episodes, here's the playlist for the video series on the build of Distant Shores 4. Way back in 1986, we started building our first boat, a classic 37, a Sparkman and Stevens design. We purchased the Bear Holland deck for $25,000. Inside, there was nowhere even to stand or place our tools on. We started by putting 6,000 pounds of lead in the bilge as internal ballast, then made reinforcing frames and finally we glassed in floors. We built from the original plans and between the two of us put in over 6,000 boat building hours. After two years working every evening and weekend and all our vacation time, we launched SV2 Step for test sailing. The inside was still unfinished. Then it was another year of concentrated building and sailing before we set off on our first adventure, a three year voyage to countries around the Atlantic Ocean. We also started our filming career as we documented the voyage for an hour long program, which aired on broadcast television. It was the first of many we have produced over three decades of cruising. Our first boat had a 28 horsepower diesel engine and had a range under power of nearly 400 miles from 130 liters of diesel. After a full-time three-year cruise, we added the hard dodger and two 55 watt solar panels. She took us over 60,000 miles during 18 years of sailing adventures. As we voyage to distant shores, Sailboat technology has changed quite a lot in the 16 years since we sold Two Step. In that time, we have owned three Southerly fiberglass sailboats. One thing that is still included in most modern boats is a diesel engine, but that's changing as I saw last week in Amsterdam at the Marine Equipment Trade Show, METS. We've been evaluating the option of a hybrid drive, so let's go over the pros and cons and how it works. I check in with my friend Casey of Endless Playtime who is currently building an HH-44 hybrid catamaran. As an electrical engineer, formerly of SpaceX, I wanted to get his thoughts on the feasibility of a hybrid on a cruising sailboat. I catch up with Casey offshore aboard a 50-foot catamaran. And then I'm on Starlink, so there's some chance the signal will drop. I'm also just kind of curious to see how well this works. Are you kidding? It's fantastic. Yeah, it's very yeah. simple. You look amazing, for one thing. It looks like it hasn't had even a single dropout. It's uh, your better oh, yeah, signal it's been working most... really well. Oh, that's amazing. How far offshore are you? We're about 50 miles offshore. Georgia. 50 miles offshore, and then it did actually drop out for just one second. <laughs> oh, it did. oh, no. We jinxed it. Yeah, yeah, we're 50 miles offshore of Georgia, so we're just just shore side of the Gulf Stream. Oh, that's exciting. So you've been trying planning a passage inside the Gulf Stream? Yeah, because we're headed down to Port Pierce, Florida. Yeah, that Off makes sense. going to get some work done in the marina. That is really exciting. So it's going to take you three days or so? Yeah, from here, we sailed down from Virginia. So we've been offshore for a couple of days already. So we expect to get in sometime on Saturday. So that's two days, two days from now. Okay. I can see a great big uh, Genoa and behind you in the view, the image yep. I'm seeing shows a huge, is it a code zero or a Genoa? It looks like you're having a great sail. Yeah, it's a Solent. So without messing up the video too bad. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, great. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Chair. There we are. <laughs> well, this is amazing. 50 miles offshore getting full streaming video from here. Yeah, it works better than most marina Wi-Fi. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So this boat you're on is an HH50, which is related to the HH you're going to get, which is a 44. Yep. But uh, this yeah. one is this doesn't I presume does not have a hybrid drive system in it. It doesn't have the hybrid drive. So the HH44s, which are in production right now, but they haven't been delivered any, are going to be the first ones with the hybrid drive. Okay, that's pretty exciting. So. I guess that was what I kind of wanted to talk about today was yeah. just how you made a decision and what sort of was your goals and aspirations when you decided that you'd go for a hybrid drive. Did you, I mean, you've had a lot of sailing experience on your Katana, which had a conventional twin diesels. Sort of what were you hoping to get when you decided to go for the hybrid? Yeah, so for us, I come from a sailboat racing background. So I've always been a racer and then switched over to cruising. So our, or my style of offshore cruising is really sail as much as I can, and I don't use my engines as much. So having really long range on diesel wasn't as big of a priority. And for me, I really wanted to be as electric as I could for, I guess, a couple of reasons. We wanted to be better for the environment, use less diesel. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit of a, I was an electrical systems engineer at SpaceX. So I'm actually more familiar with electrical systems than I am with diesel engines. Right. And then the sailing experience, I find a lot better. The diesels are noisy, they're smelly. So the more we can use the electric engine, it's nice, quiet sailing. And that's why I'm out here to sail. So if I do have to use engines, I'd rather have them be as electric as possible. Um, for dockside maneuvering, so getting in and out of the dock, the electrics are great. They start up instantly, instant torque, they're quiet. They work really well for maneuvering. And then if we do need it, if we are, because I do tend to do offshore sailing, if we do need longer range, you can just get more range out of a diesel engine and diesel. So we do have both the benefits, the electric engines for most of the time. And then for our sailing, we really have the diesels as a backup. If we want to go really far and there's no wind, we can use the diesels. Yeah, I think I had looked at a similar sort of equation. We've got the ability to go as far as we ever could with any of our other boats in light winds or if we're in areas where it's dark and we're not getting any solar and uh, not getting solar power or anything, we can still yeah. have all the power of the, the diesel. And yet it's a pretty reliable system where the diesel drives directly through the shaft. The term hybrid means there is more than one power source to drive the propeller. For sailboats, this will be an electric motor running from a battery bank or a diesel engine. With the parallel hybrid system, either power source can turn the propeller shaft. In diesel mode, the engine drives the prop shaft directly. In electric mode, the gearbox is put in neutral, disconnecting the engine, and the electric motor drives the prop shaft through a belt drive using power from the battery. Uh, definitely, yeah. So the, I guess the hybrid marine, which both you and I are getting in our boats, is the parallel hybrid, which, yeah, yeah the benefit is that it's still a traditional drivetrain. There is a diesel engine hooked up to a prop versus, yeah, yeah that is different. Some other boats, what's called a serial hybrid, if, they, if you choose to go that route, then you, you have just an electric motor and you have a separate generator. With an electric motor directly connected to the drive shaft, the propeller can drive the boat using power from the battery bank. Operating at medium slow speed, the battery would drive the boat for just a few hours, so an electric generator powered by a diesel motor is added to recharge the battery, making this a serial hybrid system with a generator in series with the electric drive. In, in either case, the cost is a little bit of extra weight, perhaps. Um, because you're still going to have the diesel tank and the diesel yep. engine and an electric and then an electric bank. So how big of a battery bank and how much range do you think you'll get with the system you'll have on your boat? On ours, yeah. So we're going to have a about a 40 kilowatt electric bank. 40 kilowatts. Yeah, 40 kilowatt hours, which is pretty good. So that can run, uh, there'll be 10 kilowatt electric motors in each hull. So we're getting a catamaran. So one of those motors that can run that can run a motor at full throttle for four hours, um, yeah, which wow. is more than enough to do to do maneuvering in and out of a marina or maneuvering on and off anchor. 
We also have that much power for the house side of things. So our boat won't have any propane on it whatsoever. We'll also do all electric cooking. So we have a big battery bank, not just for propulsion, but we'll be able to run air conditioning, cook food and do everything else off electricity. Well, air conditioning too. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're doing the same, but I was kind of planning about 28 kilowatts. Mm-hmm. We'll see how much room there is to fit in a bigger bank possibly. Rough numbers. I had something like uh, 20, the 28 kilowatt bank might cost around $20,000 for to buy that battery bank, assuming MG batteries, which we had the last time. Yep. Uh, add up to something yeah, like there's that a and good... you'd have another batch. Yeah, so ours will cost, it'll cost a bit more. So cost is when people are designing boats, that's all. That's a big part of lithium batteries is how much do they cost. Uh, thankfully, the cost of them goes down every year. So even a year from now, that number will be less. That's good because I bought ours two years ago. We bought a bank okay. and put it in DS3 down in Panama. Yeah. So I installed two of the MG uh, seven kilowatt batteries um, to make uh, 48 volts yep. with an in-series. So we'll get the same kind of bank batteries again. I think they were pretty easy to work with. So thinking about your, your crossing right now, you're doing this passage of a few days. How do you think that, like if you were sort of imagining and playing the whole thing along as if you were on your boat, would there be differences and how would it be working? How much sailing would you have been doing at the moment? Are you getting some regeneration sailing? Exactly. So this passage in particular, the first day was light wind. Just the weather, the way our weather window worked. We left, uh, we followed a front out of Virginia. And so we motored some the first day. So on my boat, I probably would end up motoring a bit less than we did on this boat because here we had a bunch of diesel and just we were able to motor. Um, so I, on our boat, we'll probably go a little slower the first day, but then after that, we haven't needed to motor. We've had good breeze for the next few days. So we would sail mostly the same. They're just going to have a flat roof, and that might be one of the big differences between our boat and the boat you're getting. With the catamaran and a flat roof, we'll have a ton of solar, four kilowatts of solar from the factory, and I'll probably add more once we get the boat. More than that? Wow. Yeah, we're our plan is we've designed an arch on the back so we can come up with around a thousand. So you'd have almost four times the uh, solar capacity, I think. Which yeah, is so we've got a plus four, of cats, obviously. Exactly. So we got four thousand on a coach roof with no arch in the back, and I'll probably add an arch to put another thousand on. <laughs> on our previous boat, we also went to electric cooking. So if you Did start you? going to electric cooking and electric propulsion you use a lot of electricity. So once you kind of go that route, you just want as much solar as you can get. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we've never done electric cooking before. So I imagine that'll take anywhere two to four kilowatts a day, I would guess, but I don't really know that. So I don't know if you've got any ideas about what you spent or how much power your galley used. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, that's probably, probably a pretty good estimate, but it just really depends... Oh, yeah. How much you use. It really just depends what style of cooking you do, how much you use it, and then how much you use if you use water heaters. So, one downside of if you get rid, if you don't use your engines as much, a lot of people take for granted engines heat up your water. Most people rely on their engine to heat up water for showers. Hmm. So, that's a big one is, yeah, heating up water. Yeah, that's quite right. Especially if we go north, that's one of our big plans at the beginning to go north. So number one, we kind of lose a lot of the solar powers if the sun only goes this high off the horizon. And then number two, we lost our free showers from every day having a bit of motoring. So that's one of the biggest changes. Yeah. One of the things with you guys will still have diesel. So you guys will be able to, we still can warm it up pretty easily. Well, and I think it'll probably work pretty reasonably because we've got uh, the normal idea that you would probably motor in and out of port or have to run the engine as a generator. Yeah. Even if you're at an anchor, you're running the engine as a, at a, as a generator for perhaps 45 minutes or an hour. And I think it's only about 15 minutes or so before the engine's heated up and started to heat shower water on its own. Exactly. Yeah. Its own free power, the free uh, engine water heater that you get. So, Yeah, so that'll work great. 
So what is the time scale for your boat? How is uh, the construction going? Is, is it already in build or uh, how is it going? Yeah, it's in build. It's in the molds. So we get the updates. It doesn't quite look like a boat yet. It's still in pieces. Um, but we'll be we'll get our boat in a little over a year. So it's in the molds now. And it takes a while to put all the pieces together. Yeah, of course. That's exciting. Well, congratulations on that. And thank you so much for this update yeah. and a bit of a chat. I don't know if you had any cool. other thoughts about hybrids that just sort of for people who are thinking of it, I'm the goal. Part of the goal with this video is to have an idea of setting realistic expectations for what you could hope to do and uh, anything on the trade-offs on uh, going for a hybrid drive. If you have any, any final thoughts. Yeah, I think a hybrid drive, as we kind of touched on, is a great way to test out electric propulsion, but still have the diesel backup that people are used to. And so I don't think there are too many trade-offs. You probably pay a little extra and you're going to have some weight of extra. If you, if you have two engines, yeah, there's some weight penalty, but comfort wise, you're left with all the comforts you want. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. So I think it's great there. And for what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to use my diesels as little as possible and help show that you can actually go all electric. So one of my goals is, yeah, I'll have the hybrid as a backup, but I'd really like to show what it takes to go all electric. I'm very interested in that as well. Hopefully the kind of propeller that you can get is obviously important for, for yeah. that in some ways as you get the regeneration from sailing is something that we can do with a sailboat that you can't do with a power boat. You're never going to get regeneration out of a pure power uh, hybrid boat. But with a sailboat, like you're going now, you might sail for the next few days and just be uh, quietly regenerating power as well as the collecting the solar you've got. So, Yeah, the way we're sailing right now, I wouldn't expect us to have to use the engines as a generator. Between having a lot of solar and able to hydro-regenerate, I think we'd have no problem comfortably living off of all electricity. Uh, that sounds great. Well, we'll check in with you throughout the build again as you get more details and what it all looks like, and we'll do the same with you. And thank you very much for uh, doing a chat with us. It's very exciting to be talking. I, I'm sure this is my first Zoom call I've ever done to a yacht at sea with the Starlink, so that's very cool. Mm -hmm. And yes, very exciting and have a great passage. Uh, it's been a thrill to be on board with you online. Yeah. Okay, I'm just pressing. It's, it's stop a game record. changer being on Starlink. It's been really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's cool. We're excited about installing a hybrid power system on Distant Shores 4, which is scheduled to launch in summer 2023. What are your thoughts about hybrid power on a sailboat? Do you have it? Would you like it? Please throw a comment below. We'll be continuing to document the build of our new Anxail Orion 49, so be sure to subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thanks for liking and sharing. Your support means a lot.